And I remember one of my teachers distinctively telling me that I was going to be either in jail or dead by 21. You ain't never talking to me that way again. Everyone's like, oh my God. God knows who's crazy. <laughs> and I realized that this is, you know, basically look out for yourself when it comes to these guys. They're not your friends. Um, I personally believe that uh, fight promoters, most of them, are banking that there is not a hell. Because if there is, there's a nice warm sp spot by the fireplace for those guys. I mean, they're, they're a unique bunch of scumbags. But I would look in their eyes and I knew they were mine. When I was fighting, I could look at the man's eyes and I could tell if he was scared of me or not. If he was scared of me, I knew he was mine. I was going to make sure he had a good reason to be scared of me. But I'll pounce on you if you're scared of me. I'll pounce on if you are tired. My first fight I got was four years old. I started school at four years old. After I stood up to that, to that bully who whooped me. Well, the problem is, see, I ran home the first time. I ran all the way home and I told my older brother, man, what happened? And he said, man, he, he dragged me all the way back up, pulled this kid out of the bus line, made me fight him. And I took a whooping. And then um, I went home, my brother's like, don't worry, you're gonna survive. And I realized I was okay. You know, I mean, I was crying about it. I realized it wasn't so bad. And he goes, tomorrow we're gonna do, do it again. I'm freaking out. So I go up there again, man, my older brother's waiting for me at the rock wall, makes me call this kid out. This time, we, 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 before anything, I mean, we, we, we clashed, but the teachers broke it up before anybody got hurt. And then the very next day, my brother was on the rock wall. I had to call this kid out again. And, you know, this time I fought him to again to another st a standstill. And then the very next day, there's my brother. And I had to call him out. And this time the kid saw me and he says, I don't want any more trouble. You know, he goes, it's like, I don't want to fight you. And, uh, and, you know, and so I was like, and believe me, I didn't want to fight him either. You know, I was like, and my brother said, now you're never going to have a problem with that kid again. You're never going to have another problem with anybody in that school again. And he was right. You know, the business is also very, can be very corrupt, especially overseas in Japan. It was extremely corrupt. Nanko Furakuno Shishin, Gai Metsa. You know, there was always fights that were very questionable that they were thrown. They asked me to throw a fight one time. Um, and after I said I wouldn't do it, I knew my days were numbered over there because I wasn't playing ball. And uh, so I started losing these split decisions, you know. If you look at my record, I've been stopped before. And, you know, that's that, that, that fight. But, Every one of my other losses have all been split decisions. And they're all overseas in Japan. So, so you know, it's, I knew it. I, I knew the moment that I wasn't gonna play, play ball, that I was gonna have to knock everybody out that I fought. Also as UFC champion, and also fighting here in Pride. Still feeling, oh! You know, so the guys that I didn't knock out, I lost. You know, split decision. But, and that, that just kind of burned me out. I mean, there's one thing understanding that aspect, there's another thing of just having to deal with it, you know, and it just has a point. I was just like, fuck you, man, I'm just gonna go, I'm done. You know, so the, the business side, of it, the fact that you just get to a point where you know you just don't wanna, you don't wanna, uh, I didn't wanna hit anybody anymore, you know. <laughs>